Replacement facial animation using mouth stickers has been used in a number of shows, and I recently tried it in an 11 second club entry before making use of it on a studio job. This tutorial works through the process of creating the assets and animating in this style. Here's what we're going to create. Well, I think I'm right. We'll need a hard surface head. I'm going to use Sculpey 3, a colored oven baked clay. You can use a wooden ball for the core of the head, or to reduce the weight even more, I'm using a tight wad of aluminum foil. The whole head is covered in about a quarter inch of clay. The mouth area is wide and flat to fit stickers. Instead of having spherical eyeballs set into the head, I'm sculpting the surface of the eyes onto the face. The pupils will be stickers. Just make sure that the surface of the eyes and the mouth area are smooth. It's best to keep the brows in a neutral expression. The head is baked hard and the wood, foam, and cloth will survive the lower baking temperature. The clay is the skin tone I want so there's no risk of scratching skin paint. But the eyes are painted and I like to add a layer of clear gloss finish to make them appear wet. To make the pupils, I'm applying blue ink to glossy photo paper, adding a black dot, and cutting them out with a hole punch. To stick the pupils and mouth onto the face, use a restickable, or also called repositionable, glue stick, not a normal glue stick. This is so once they're on the face, you can slide them around, peel them off, and reapply them even an hour later. I'm making the brows and lids out of clay so they can bend and change as I animate. Now let's make some mouths. Here's a way to determine the basic size of the mouths. To first make some sample ones, draw them on paper that's preferably a little heavier than printer paper, cut them out with an X-Acto knife, and stick them on with the restickable glue. We'll need a whole set of mouth shapes for dialogue, and a Google search will turn up lots of charts and reference material. I think that some charts made specifically for animation are too exaggerated. People don't pronounce words like that when they talk. I like to make them simpler. When drawing them out, I'm making them about three times bigger than they need to be because I don't draw tiny things very well. Then I use my printer to shrink them down to the right size for the puppet's face. Shoot a JPEG of each mouth lined up on a line across the page. Notice that they all have pointy ends. Even O and W shapes are not completely rounded. For female mouths, you can add lips to a copy of the guy's mouths. The mouths are sorted, labeled, and numbered onto a board. Now for track reading. Well, I think I'm right. You need an editing or audio app that can scrub through the voice recordings and preferably see the waveform. Frame through it listening for the changes, first noting when each word starts and then breaking down the words into the sounds they make on each frame. Note all of this on an exposure sheet. Load those JPEGs into the editing program and edit a preview of the mouths you chose for each frame. Well, I think I'm right. Well, I think I'm right. That way you know exactly what mouths to use before actually animating the puppet. Your exposure sheet should indicate the breakdown of the dialogue, the mouth numbers, and cues for the movement of the puppet. Now it's time to animate the puppet. I'm using iStop Motion on a Mac. I read the tracks with the timeline set for 24 frames per second, so I'm setting the frame rate here for 24 as well. If you read your tracks at the standard video rate of 30 frames per second, then set this for 30. Then load in the audio file and set up the first pose with the first mouth shape. I'm going to animate head moves in twos. That's two frames per head move. So I shoot two frames. Now remove the mouth and replace it with the next mouth noted on the exposure sheet. Ghosting is very helpful here because you can line up the new mouth with the ghost of the previous one. Line up the corners of the mouth to make the mouth movement smoother and natural. Move the head only after you're satisfied with the alignment of the mouth. If your stop motion app has it, flipping between frames will show if the mouths are lining up nicely one to the next. Shoot two frames and replace the mouth with the next one. Watch the eye line as you go and adjust the pupils to keep the puppet's gaze in the right direction. Tweezers are good for grabbing small mouths. Sometimes a mouth stays on for let's say four frames. So for the first two frames, proceed as normal, changing the mouth first and then moving the head. Then just move the head for the next two frames. Now here's an instance where we need three frames of one mouth. 
So we change the mouth, move the head, and shoot two frames. Then we move just the head and shoot just one frame. That's three frames for the mouth, so now we change the mouth without moving the head and shoot just one frame. Continue following your exposure sheet to see when to change the mouth. Let's see how it's going. Well, 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 well. That's working, though I could stand cleaning his chin more often. So continue on, moving the head on every other frame and changing the mouth as the exposure sheet indicates. You could choose to simplify the process by changing the mouth in twos as well, or setting the frame rate at 15 frames per second instead of 30. Oh, and it doesn't seem to look good to have a mouth shape on for only one frame. It just makes it chattery. For the average blink, I like one frame half closed, two frames closed, one frame half open, and one frame almost back to the open as sort of an ease out. So finally, did it work? Well, I think I'm right. Well, I think I'm right. It's a question of whether or not it's a style that will work for your project.